Hello everyone, welcome back to the Entrepreneur Hour. My name is Miguel Sanchez, I'm your host, and if you don't know who I am, I create content around helping entrepreneurs and investors monetize and innovate through innovation. And today, my my show, I wanted to, to take advantage of what's going on today. Today is a very good lesson in how to create revenue through content creation. And how is that? Is because of what's called Amazon Prime Day. And what Amazon Prime Day is, is a lot of people actually spend a lot of money today ahead of Black Friday and Christmas and all that. But why I'm bringing it up around content creation is because affiliate marketing is one of the quick, easy cheat codes to creating revenue around content, right? So today, basically, I want to show you how it works, how how to do it, how I'm doing it, um, how everybody does it pretty much. There's many different ways, but um, what I wanted to go over today is that opportunity because, you know, people are going to be buying things right now for Christmas, um, Halloween, whatever it is, whatever your niche is, you could be creating content around it and drawing people to stuff that you get a commission from. And almost everything has this affiliate marketing opportunity if you look for it. So I'm going to show you how to look for it. I'm going to show you how to implement it. I'm going to show you um, how to think about it, right? So even today, I'm going live today because I've seen a lot of content creators posting about Prime Day. And I was like, why are they doing this? And then when I watched, I was like, oh, okay. They're basically selling products today knowing that stuff is on sale and they can link people to it and get a commission. So if you imagine if you are the type of person that talks about camera equipment, right? Or, or like computers, right? Those are high ticket items. And if you get a commission of maybe 8%, I think it is, 7 or 8% on, on Amazon, imagine getting 8% of a $2,000 computer, right? So this is this stuff could add up. And the beauty of, of places like Amazon, if you use Amazon links for, for affiliate marketing is, let's say you somebody drops there because you link them for the camera. And they end up buying other things because Amazon has so many different things, you actually get commission on everything they buy, not just that one item you sent them for. So if you've ever asked me for a link to buy something, I definitely sent you an Amazon Amazon um, affiliate link, right? I'm not charging for my information, but hey, if I make a few bucks off you buying something, that's how I can get paid back, right? And I'm not asking you for anything. And they're not asking me for anything other than doing what I do. So we both win, right? So what Amazon allows and many other platforms allow this too. It's not just Amazon. I think all of them pretty much have it. It's just really about you figuring out your niche. With me, I don't really... My niche is not really selling things on Amazon. But I have been thinking more and more about how I can incorporate, right? So one is my my gear. The stuff I use to create all this content... I have a link in my description that says it's called uh, bit.ly slash T-E-H gear, right? And the reason is people always ask me, what are you using? And I'm always sending them links. So why not send them? And, and this is, I'm going to start showing my screen. This is a really good place to start. It's called kit.co. So of course, I know if you are checking, if you're checking in on the, the, the show or the podcast later, and you're on Instagram or on the podcast, you can't see. So I would, I would, I would ask you either now or later to jump on the YouTube or Facebook to, to really check out um, the screens if, if you need to, if you feel like you need to. But I'm going to try to do my color commentary of how it all works. So Kitco is, a, is one of the places where you could start, right? So Kitco is really good because it, only, it doesn't only do Amazon. But it does something really cool with Amazon where it'll... Is called localize your links. So let's say you're setting up an affiliate link. And actually, let me let me start from the beginning. Go to affiliate. I mean, of course, Google Amazon.com space. And then you gotta hit a backspace because it thinks you're trying to search Amazon. And then you put affiliate link. Affiliate program. 
or whatever. Just affiliate. Just affiliate. And what, the first thing you'll see is Amazon Associates Central. That's where you sign up to be an Amazon affiliate um, partner. So if you see in the last, I guess, week, I got 54 clicks. Somebody purchased something, but I guess I didn't get the money yet until that the, the sale goes through. I don't know. But so... I have affiliate links for products, so my camera equipment, my mics, my, everything I use to create content, my, my stand, my computer. So if people want to buy the same thing I buy, I get a commission. But I also do this thing where I give you a free audio book, right? And that's, that's through Amazon Audible. Audible owns Amazon. So there's this thing where, here I'll show it to you, I think it's called Bounty... Amazon Bounty Program. So you see, if you look up Amazon Bounty Program, once you log into your Amazon Associates, you will see there's some things in here that they give you a nicer commission if you if you sell. So depending on your niche, it makes it may make sense for you to find something in here and really push it because, for instance, if you buy the Audible, see try. Audible, get two free audiobooks. See, this one I use, right? So with this, you get two free audiobooks if you haven't signed up for Amazon, right? I mean, for Audible. And they give me, I believe, $5 for everybody who signs up. I think so. I think that's what it is. So think about that, right? The authors don't even make that much for, for a book sale. An author makes a dollar for an Amazon Audible book sale. You can make five by linking people to Audible and having them pick two free books. So if you look at it, like this is where content creation could get really, really, um, you know, revenue generating um, because when you look at it, if you're creating content around, let's say, if you look in this bounty program, there's something for, I saw something for kids. All right. Endless access to top kids content. Amazon free time unlimited, right? So this is a bounty, right? So I don't know how much they give, but I think it's $5. But let's say you have content around kids. So one thing I'm going to do with my son, because I'm going to teach my son all this in the gaming stuff, right? So I'm going to show him how to highlight and promote this Amazon bounty, around his content, right? So he may not make money on advertising for a long time, right? But he can make money on this Amazon bounty, right? So let's say he does 10 a month, that's $50 a month, right? So that's where like this affiliate marketing thing is huge, but you can't just focus on one. You have to have a bunch and you have to create a lot of content because not everybody that watches is going to click your link. It's going to take a lot of watches to really generate affiliate income. But it's an option and you should be having it if you are creating content like I am. So, and like most people who are hitting me up want to do. So this is one of the major ways. I know many people have been hitting me up about how to monetize their podcast. This is one very easy way. And of course it's a link because they need the link to know it came from you. So you can put that in the description of your podcast. In Anchor, you could do that. And I, I do it right now with my, with my camera gear, right? So one thing today is such a huge, well, today and yesterday, I should have done this episode yesterday, actually. Um, but why I made it today is because it's not going to end today. Amazon Prime Day is today. So a lot of people are spending money on Amazon, sure. But going forward until Christmas, people are going to be buying things. And if you're creating content and you're telling people about things that they can buy, that they can buy on Amazon, you could be getting a commission on that. So this has been something that I've been really learning for many years, actually. I was working on this for years years ago with, with um, influencers. I was trying to figure out how to get influencers to drive traffic to affiliate links, and then we both make money. It didn't work out. But that's not because it's not a good thing. It's more because it takes a certain mindset that most people may not want to do. It You got to go into this place and find these deals. And, and see, because, you know, what happens is sometimes you may just talk about something and then you got to come back in here and look to see if there's um, an Amazon link for it. But there most of the time is. So if, if, if I look, I, 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 the other day I sent somebody, um, I think it was my mic. Um, 
Okay, I'll show you my, I'm going to show you my kit on um, Kitco. So view profile. So you create a profile and then you, um, you go into it. Um, let me just go into it. So here, you know, you can put a video. So I put one of the videos I made. Um, and then I show the, the camera I have, right? So Kitco will, what, like I said, localize those links. So let's say you buy in the UK before you wouldn't get that affiliate link because the UK had a whole different link. So you have to like make different links based on where the content was being seen, which is really hard. So a place like Kitco, you put your stuff on there and they do all that for you. So you get that revenue wherever in the world people buy. So that's a, that's one of the benefits of doing Kitco, kit.co. Um, so if you see like, I, like my camera right now and actually today just happened today because I'm working on doing a possible, um, actually I'm doing this deal with a publicly traded company where I'm going to start working on creating content with them. And we were figuring out the process and I was showing them my equipment and they were like, all right, I'll just buy the same thing you have. So what I could do is I could just send them the kit code link and say, here's everything I got. Buy what you think you need. They have certain things already. But what I was telling them is we want to have both cameras look very similar. So you may want to look at the same camera setup I have. So that's what we're... So right now, I'm going to send them the Kitco link. And they, if they purchase, I'm going to get a commission. Right? Which is fair. I'm, I'm doing the research. I did the research. And I'm going to give them links. So I should get some Amazon. For Amazon, that's less advertising they had to spend. Less, less sales. That's everything because I just became a salesperson for them, right? So why wouldn't they give you commission? It just makes it better for them because they spend less. Trust me, they spend less on on giving you 8% than advertising and spending money on Google and all these different places. So it's a win-win. And most companies have this. I mean, some don't, sure, but most do. So you always want to look. If you're talking about something... Make sure, and, and you, especially on content, right? If you're, you're recommending stuff and you don't recommend, like I don't recommend stuff that I won't use myself. Most of the time I'm showing you stuff I'm actually using, right? Um, actually all the time, all the time I, I put something is because I'm using it. So if we get money together on it, that's awesome. If we don't, I'm still going to use it, right? So like a, a very good example is how I'm doing this, this live stream everywhere on StreamYard. StreamYard has an affiliate link. Where if you use mine, you get $10, I get $10. Why do they do that? Because right now they're trying to grow their platform. And if they have content creators like me promoting it and I get $10, you get $10. You try it for cheaper. I get $10 off my bill monthly, right? And if I get three people a month, or I think I'm on the 50 plan. I forget what plan I'm on. It covers the cost. So my goal is just to have little streams of income coming around, multiple revenue streams that cover my cost, right? So cover my cost for my companies, my company, my, my, my personal life, right? So this is just a way of continuing to try to do that. And affiliate links, I, like I've said in the past, I know people that make $40,000 a month on affiliate links. Of course, they make a lot of content. They have huge audiences and they niche down to selling things that are expensive, right? So... It depends on what you're doing. If you if you remember uh, back a few years ago, there was a lot of makeup um, influencers, and I don't know if there still are a lot. I'm pretty sure. I guess they would be. But what they were all doing, where they were showing makeup, and then saying, "Hey, this is the makeup I'm using. Buy it if you like it." And all those that whole audience was going and buying it, and they were getting they were getting commission. And then eventually, they got big enough. They got sponsors by those makeup brands. So in a way, this affiliate link thing is kind of like the, the passage to sponsorship, right? You have to create a path to a sponsorship. And this affiliate link thing is the first place because Amazon, Best Buy, all these, all, I think everything, Target, I think all of these places have affiliate links. I don't really search them all, but when I do search, this is what I do. Basically, I just, I look at the, I look at the, 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 the item I'm talking about and I look up whether it's so, so for instance, I've been talking about this, this application called Descript. It's an AI that takes your audio and helps you edit a podcast and a video podcast. Very easy. 
So what did I do? First thing I do is I check Descript Affiliate, right? So see what comes up. Affiliate program. What, what I found here is people want it, but Descript hasn't done it yet, right? But when they do it, every place I mentioned Descript, I'm going to have a Descript link. So there's, a, there's, there's two types of, of affiliate marketing revenue though, right? Some is actual cash, like Amazon gives you actual cash. So if somebody spends $100, you get $8, right? And you could, of course, buy stuff on Amazon. You could take the money, put it in your bank, whatever. Other platforms like StreamYard, for instance, I spoke about StreamYard. They don't give me actual cash. They give me money off the service I'm using anyway. So it's still like getting that money, in my, my opinion, because I was going to pay that anyway, and now I don't have to, right? So, and then there's um, ones that give you money on their platform, but it but it's still actual money. So, like M1 Finance, you'll see it on my description. I have a link there, and, and a few weeks ago, they were giving $20 to you and me if you signed up, and a few people signed up. So, I got $20 every time, and I'm able to invest that money in the stock market. So, it was like getting cash but not getting cash, right? I, I was able to put that those dollars, actual real dollars, and buy stock. So it is money, right? It was money that I didn't have, and I now I have, and now I was looking the other day, and it grew 7%. So now not only did I get free money, that money made money already in a few weeks, right? So this is where, depending on what you talk about, and this is why my goal was to create a, a multiple revenue stream channel where I'm not only talking about innovation, which is what I mostly do. I'm also trying to figure out how to create multiple revenue streams, especially in a time like right now when who knows what the economy is going to be, right? So to me, I, I look at this affiliate marketing thing and it really is a moneymaker if you have the right niche. If you have the right niche, think about, I was looking at this, this one guy who's talking mostly about like high-end music equipment. Right, so some of these mics and and sound things are like thousands of dollars. So imagine him getting a ten thousand dollar sale, which is not out of the ordinary for the type of equipment he's talking about. He'd be making eight hundred dollars a pop off every time somebody buys off his affiliate link. Right, so this is, I mean, maybe eighty dollars. Uh, the the math, eight percent of ten thousand, whatever. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> but this is where content and the, and the consistency matters because as you keep creating those backlinks get views too. So the more you create these algorithms, which again, we talk about AI, these platforms, the more you create, the more they promote your stuff because they realize, all right, this person is not just a one-off. So if this person is helping me, let's help them. Right. And that's that's before you even get to advertising. When you get to monetization on a platform like YouTube, they promote you even more. Why is that? Because they make money off your content. They are your partner at that point. So of course they want to make more money. So they're going to show your video over somebody who's not monetized. And if the person decides to click on it, you both make money. So in the beginning, again, why I say this is a path to monetization of content is you got to get in the groove of understanding that your content may take a while before it's revenue, before the revenue comes from advertising. It could take a very long time on a platform like YouTube now. On, on podcasting, like I've been speaking about the last few days, day one. But if you want it, this is something you could do. I don't do it, but you could do, right? Let's say you have a podcast and every episode, remember I told you that, that Anchor gives you $15 per thousand listens? What you could do is pick a, a, a product on like an Amazon and read an ad for that product and say the link is in the description. And if people actually buy that, you might make more than $15 per CPM, per, per thousand views or listens, right? So there's, there's all kind of tricks you can try. The biggest thing, and this comes back to an episode I had a long time ago, is you can't be afraid to sell. If you want to make money doing anything, you have to be able to ask for the sale. So as entrepreneurs, 
we have to get good at this or we will go out of business, right? So we get to the point to, to practice a lot more than most. If you're coming at this content game, not become not from the entrepreneurship side, you may feel a little bit like, Ugh, I don't want to be asking people to buy things. But sometimes that's all you got. That's all you got in the beginning, right? So right now on YouTube, I don't do it. I don't do it consciously. I know I talk a lot about my businesses and I get business from that. Um, but I'm not like, hey, buy a website from Mass IDH. You know what I mean? I'm not doing it like that. Um, and people have told me I should, but I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't want to make it salesy. I just want to give value. And then if you want to work with me, you work with me. You don't. You, you don't. I'll be good either way. But I wanted to make sure people understand right now for the next. Because after Christmas, I mean, after um, Black Friday was normally the day after Thanksgiving. These companies have been pushing it up and up and up. So Amazon took the bold move of saying, we're going to make our Black Friday today. So they did yesterday and today. Way ahead of the real Black Friday. And what they did was they forced the whole industry to move up their sales too because Amazon's smart and they know what they're doing tech they know all the data they said if we give out if I, if we go early we could take all their money and 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 all those companies that are waiting to Black Friday there's going to be no money for them to 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 get people to buy with because we're going to make all the sales so now all these companies are like uh oh if Amazon is going to do it we got to do it too so now Yesterday and today, there was a bunch of sales all around the internet. But as a content creator, you that's an opportunity. I'm not just saying these next two days. This, this is the last day. I think it ends tonight. So I should have did this yesterday. I didn't think about it to this to today. But it is what it is. You know it now. And it's not over. Remember, Black Friday is still going to happen. And we are like at almost about a month away from it. So you got time to start figuring it out. Because from now to Christmas... People are going to spend money. There's no doubt about it. So if they buy something because you recommended it, you might as well make a buck or two, right? So with me, my thing is not really, I'm not selling, I'm not talking about equipment that much, but a lot of people always ask, what kind of mic you use? What kind of camera you use? So for me, those are my affiliate links right now. So that's why I got the Kitco. If you look at the Kitco, that's this is all the stuff I have, right? And if you look up, this is, this is a, a pretty mo- a good amount of stuff. Of course, I didn't buy it all in one shot. I bought chunks at a time, right? So you may just want to buy a camera at first and a lens later. Certain things you're going to need. So like I was telling you yesterday uh, that I met the guy today, there's things that he definitely needs because we're about to do a show together and I, uh, uh, that will be sponsored. You, you, you'll see that one. Um, but... It's, it's exciting because I think right now, everyone is seeing the opportunity of content creation, including this partnership that I just finished today, pretty much. I went and I checked out how we were going to do it. This came from people recognizing that even though I don't get a million views every show, there's value to where, where I'm putting this content out and who I'm talking to, right? Eventually, that, those views will go up and up and up, and that content will be there forever, so this stuff will, and, and it's not like one time you see something, you just automatically buy in. I've said this in many episodes. It takes about 20 times for the human eye and brain to see something before they start to like really want to understand more. Why you think you see the same ad over and over and over and over again? It's because everybody knows this. It's something called acquired taste with music and everything, right? Where you may not like something the first time you see it, but you see it 20 times. Acquired taste is literally that, right? If you if there's a food that you don't really like, they say try it 10 times or whatever, and you will like it. It's acquired taste. So this is how our brains work. So you can't just create one show a month and think you're going to do anything. That's why I go, I go every day because I'm like, look, one is practice. I played sports. We practiced every day, right? We practiced every day for the game on the weekend or the, the random game, whenever it was. But we practiced every day. So I'm taking the same approach to this game. I'm practicing every day, right? And when the big game comes, I'll be ready because I've been shooting in the gym, right? Every day I'm shooting in the gym. 
you know and and even this hour now where i'm i'm mostly by myself is me practicing but at the same time i'm practicing this way because i don't want to schedule guests right this second because i I have a lot of things i'm juggling where i want to make sure i can do this time slot because once i start scheduling guests i can't change that time because that will piss people off and i'm going to be getting high level people so i don't want To have people like, hey, Miguel told me 3 o'clock on Thursday and he didn't even show up, you know? So that's where tomorrow actually is going to be my first guest in a long time. Um, And that's because now I really feel cool. I feel good with um, doing the show at this time. But going back to the whole affiliate link thing and Amazon Prime Day and the holiday season, what I, what I really think you guys should be thinking about right now is if you're a content creator watching entrepreneur in general, right? Your product might be on Amazon, right? So you could be looking for content creators to see who is creating content around your type of product. Or if you're an entrepreneur like me that just has different type of equipment needs, you could start creating content around what, how you do what you do. There's a lot of people, there's, there's, there's people I know that are photographers, videographers, musicians, artists, all that stuff is sold on Amazon and people want to know, people want to know like yesterday because it's Amazon prime day, I come, I come home. My son is like, I want a keyboard and a mouse for my new computer. And I'm like, okay, let's look. He's like, no, I know the name. And I'm like, what's the name? Of course, what's happening is. He's watching these gamers play and they are hyping up a specific keyboard and mouse. So my son has watched so much of their content that he's like, no, I only want this keyboard and this mouse. And I have to, I start teaching him what I'm telling you. Those guys are talking about that specifically. One, probably because the company's paying them. Two, they're probably making money off every sale. But. You don't need a $150 keyboard to play Fortnite, <laughs> right? So as a kid, though, it's harder for the, it's It's easier to get that audience to want what you sell. The key, though, is you got to really figure out how to be genuine. You don't want to be selling anything to everybody. And then it becomes like, I can't trust your content. So that's the balance you have to play, right? There's certain things where it's like, wow, I can make a lot of money if I promote this, but I don't use it. So I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to promote it because I don't use it. And there's a reason I don't use it. So I'm not, I don't want to not say that. Then it's not genuine, right? So at the end of the day, I kind of try to make sure if I'm going to promote anything. And that's why I only really promote the gear I'm using, right? If that's the only affiliate link that's actual equipment that I have, it's, it's the list of things that I actually use every day. So if you like the look of what I have, you can see, and, and the camera I picked, M50, Canon M50, it's not like I invented that this was the number one YouTube camera. I saw content creators say over and over and over again, this is the number one camera for YouTube creators. So I said, all right, let me see. It. Then, then a new lens came out, which was like the game changer. I had been sitting on the fence for a while, still working on my, off my camera and my computer, And then this new lens came out and I saw a bunch of YouTubers and content creators talking about how this lens is a game changer. So I said, all right, now, now jump in. And that's when I, that's when I made the purchase of the camera with the lens. And you could see a notable, noticeable change in the content quality from that, from that jump. And it was, it was off months of research, watching many content creators uh, videos. And then that last person that when I actually bought it, they won. And I, it was, uh, I forgot the name of the woman. It was a woman with glasses. I gave her, I know the game. I gave her the sale, right? I knew I've been watching a bunch of content, but when I was ready to buy it, I went to her content. I pressed her link and I bought because she was one of the first people and I wanted to support her. She's, she's an African American woman creating content so that that's like you rarely see that so i said you know what i'm gonna support her so i'm gonna make sure the link i buy from is hers right so that's another thing right that that's a way to support your favorite content creator without giving them money 
There's many different ways. I spoke about another way and somebody did it. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you so much. Amazon Prime. There's an affiliate right there. That's another affiliate marketing tool that Amazon uses. But this one's a little different. It's freaking genius. They basically say if you subscribe, if you connect your Amazon Prime to your account on Twitch, then when you subscribe to a person, Amazon will give that person $5 a month as an affiliate. It's basically they're, they're showing that they wanted Twitch to help people know that Amazon it sells things, which most people know. But by connecting it, Amazon is everywhere, so they're giving you $5 a month for that. And that person who connected you, they didn't have to pay anything. They just, by ha having Amazon Prime and, and subscribing to you, you start getting $5 a month. I got to check because Virginia, thank you, she did that for me. So I got to go look and see if it all went through. And if anybody has Amazon Prime, reach out and connect with me on Twitch so I can make $5 a month. Thank you very much up front. Um, but, but yeah, so, so this is how there's a whole revenue stream here where you don't have to ask people for money. You just point them in the direction of something they were going to do anyway. And you get something for it, right? So this is where I want you to start thinking about this. So I showed you the Amazon, right? You have to create an account here on Amazon uh, affiliate. It's Amazon Associates. It's called uh, amazon-program.amazon.com. That's where the URL is to sign up, right? And then um, Kitco is a good landing page to send people if you have multiple products. So what I'm doing right now, there's another one I'm setting up right now, which is, right, I'm going to the Dominican Republic in a few weeks to set up this Airbnb. And what I'm doing is I'm going to show everything I put in my Airbnb on Amazon on a Kitco landing page. So if you want to set up your Airbnb, you see all the things that I use. And if you're like, oh, I really think I should get that too, even if for your house, not even if you want to set, an, set up an Airbnb, you can do it and I make money and you get a thing that you needed anyway, right? So I'm setting that one up right now. I'm like buying a bunch of stuff to take over there to put into the apartment. But as I'm doing it, making the list and I'm making a Kitco and it's going to be up once I show you the the location i'm gonna go shoot content around it then i'm gonna show the inside and i'm gonna show everything in there you can see from the kick code right so again how multiple revenue stream right people can go rent that place i'll make money from them renting the place they can buy things that are in the place i'll make money and then the content eventually maybe i get advertising around that content so that's three revenue streams of doing this one thing Right. And that's what I mean. You got to start thinking like that. That's how my mind is thinking now. Everything has to have multiple revenue streams. My businesses, my personal life has to or very dangerous time. Right. And this time I said, I've always kind of done it ever since the first pandemic. I always have multiple things going. But now I'm even diversifying in industry and types of revenue. I never really invested in stocks. This this. This has been the first time during this pandemic where I said, you know what? Let me understand this stock thing a little more. So I created a, a, a Facebook group called Multi the Multiple Revenue Streams group because I want to learn more about stocks. And a bunch of people are in there talking about stocks. I ask questions. Um, I watch a lot of content around stocks. I made a partnership with this new content is around a publicly traded stock market company. So that's again, that came from me saying, all right, I want to learn more about stocks. So I start doing my work, reaching out, talking to people, talk to the right people. They're like, we love what you do. Let's figure out how to work together. So it came from, and now again, multiple revenue stream. There'll be revenue from those shows. There'll be revenue from partnerships with stock owning companies. There'll be revenue from interviewing other people in this very similar way. So again, if you think in that way, I think you're, you'll be all right. I just posted something today on Instagram that said, imagine going, imagine playing Monopoly and going around every time and just collecting $200 and 
and never buying property or buying anything that will make you money, you will never win the game, right? So right now, I'm showing you how to create something that costs you nothing that can make you some revenue. All this stuff costs you nothing. You could, you don't need the fancy equipment I have to create content and point people to affiliate links. You just need to get over the fear of being in front of the camera, which takes time. It takes time. And there's been a bunch of people reaching out to me. You know who you are that have been like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And they haven't done it. So I, I jab them every now and then. I text them like, hey, uh, where's that video you're supposed to make? Um, waiting. <laughs> so you know who you are, who, if you're watching. Um, but I think, I think this is one of the... This is one of the most interesting times to be alive because of this. Think about it. The generation before us to be on a globally televised. And so here's what I am right now, right? With zero money. I'm on a globally televised show because of social media and a globally broadcasted radio station podcasting for free. Before, you have to be lucky if some network saw something in you and said, yes, we're going to give you a show or radio, a, a, a TV show or a radio show. That's not the case anymore. You get to be like, no, I, I can do this. So that's what I did. I, I'm, I'm a 40-year-old entrepreneur. No, no network is going to come to me and say, hey, here's a show, guy from the Bronx, Right? I said, I don't need to wait for anybody. I'll make it myself. And now I put it everywhere and I get opportunity. Of course, if I was on, if I took over Ellen Slot on Channel 2, it would be much bigger. Is she on Channel 2? Um, whatever channel she's on. It would be a much bigger opportunity and there would be much more money, of course. But what I'm just telling you is you don't have to wait. You could create your own opportunity right now. And the first, the first place to make money is affiliate marketing. And in the next... From now until Christmas Day, there's a lot of money going to be spent. So if you are doing what I'm doing, but you have a niche that is something that people buy, some way around it, you could be making a lot of money during this, this little sprint. Of course, in January, things are going to come down because people don't spend as much. But take advantage of what's going on right now. Right now, from now to Christmas Day... There's going to be a lot of money spent and you could get some of it. You can get some of it. Even if it's a small percent, you'll get some of it. And I'm, I'm going to be in the game. We'll see what I get. All right. Let me see if Starlink or SpaceX ever go public, buy into it. Yes, I, I, I will. I've already got Tesla. I did Tesla. I did well with Tesla. Tesla doubled my money pretty much. I just wish I had more money to put into Tesla when I put it in because it would have been amazing. But I didn't. I knew, of course, because I know technology. I know entrepreneurship. I knew he was going to do something amazing. Of course. So when the stock came out, I put money in and I benefited. Right? But I do I do think that stock like that is going to have ups and downs. There's, there's different ways to be a stock investor. Right? So this is a little bit off topic, but it's not. Stock investment, there's two different ways to think about it. There's like the day trade model where you are just looking at making gains as quick as possible. So you're like watching it. You 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 have to be very knowledgeable to do this, right? You got to understand the market. You got to understand a lot of things. You got to know how to read financial reports, all kind of crazy stuff. Have some insider information sometimes. Um, or... You do long-term term stock buying and holding. So from what I've seen in my research and knowing my time and how I like to spend it, I don't want to be a day trader. I'd rather be a, a buy and hold. So when I saw Tesla, I thought back of what Warren Buffett said. Warren Buffett said, buy a company if you think you can own it till the day you die. So to me, knowing Tesla is out in front of the, the, the electric car vehicle thing by a lot. I think that is the future of cars. And he has the number one company. So why wouldn't I put money in that? Right? If I'm thinking in that way. Um, people right now have bought Tesla and sold it. Because they made their, doubled their money like I did. But I don't. I'm not really. And I didn't put in like 
hundred thousand dollars and now I have two hundred. I put in a few bucks here and there as I as I thought about it in Cash App. I wasn't going too ham in it, but I put money in and it doubled. So now I still see I still I still see tech companies. So I just did one that nobody really knows about, and that's where I got the M1 Finance affiliate link in my description. I put a comp I put two companies that I saw based on this new technology I know is going to be popular in like 10, 15 years. I know it. I know it for a fact. So I found two companies that work in there. Put money in there. I put, not again, not thousands of dollars. But it's already up 7, 8% in like less than a month. Right? And that's, that's again, that's risky though. But again, I know I'll leave that money there for 15 years. That money probably could 10 times, 50 times eventually. But I can't be looking and trading every time I see something on that news. I just got to leave it there and forget about it. And say in 15 years, that money could be 40 times. And if it's not, cool, I just forgot about that money anyway. If it is anywhere, if it still goes up 7% a year, cool. So, all right, Ayana. Tesla also deals with solar energy. Solar, exactly, exactly. Solar farming. It's, it's to me... It's a safe bet that that money is going to grow, right? So the more, and this is the thing, I have taken, I have taken a step back on stock right now because I want to, I want to diversify right now because I do think the stock market is going to take a dip, right? So I want to have, I'd rather have cash, one for emergency fund first, because who knows when this stuff really hits the fan, how long people are going to be without work. Right now, it, there's a lot of a lot of crazy things being speak, spoke about where the economy is really being propped up. It's really like trying to fall, but like the, the powers that be are propping it up. And once there's no reason to prop it up anymore, like maybe an election, they're going to let it, right? And when it falls, if you're not ready for that fall and have some, some cushion... You could be in trouble. So that's, again, why I'm diversifying. I'm getting into the real estate stuff. Of course, people, will, I know everybody who thinks, why would you invest in vacation real estate right now when we can't travel? That's actually not true. Many people are traveling right now. I have a bunch of friends doing okay, not even okay, better than okay with vacation properties. And when I think about it, why I thought about this even before the pandemic, I always thought, Eventually, automation is going to take jobs away. So people are going to have trouble paying their rent. But people who vacation, they're still going to vacation because they're going to have jobs to vacation and they're going to want a vacation in nice places. So if I can be an Airbnb in a nice place, maybe not the most luxurious, but people can get there, have a good time for a good amount of money, not too low, not too high. I think that was a good place to be. And all my partners that are in that, in that area already are doing, doing fine by doing the same thing. So that's me thinking, all right, I got to diversify. I'm too, I'm too much in tech, only in tech. So, okay, I got to diversify with content. I got to diversify with, with stocks, real estate, cryptocurrency. I, did, I actually I put a little bit of money in cryptocurrency too because I knew Bitcoin is the future. Another, I got a bunch of videos about that. If you are... If you have actual cash right now in your under your mattress or in your bank account, you're actually losing money. So you want to basically, and if you want the real quick reason, inflation grows as a bigger percent than the interest in a bank. So if every year inflation is 4% and your bank is giving you 1%, you're losing 3% of that cash every year. That's if you have it in the bank. If you have it under your mattress... You're losing 4%, right? So, but if this is what rich people do, they take that cash, they put it in assets that produce money. Again, it comes back to what I said on Instagram today. Imagine playing Monopoly and just going around collecting $200 every time and not buying things that make you money. That's what we do as minorities because we weren't taught this. But now I'm learning it and I'm teaching it. I'm trying to teach it. But of course, I'm learning it. So I'm not a financial advisor. The lawyers I was talking to today made sure to remind me to tell you I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I do. If you decide to do it, cool. 
I'm doing what I what I'm doing based on the information I hear. But you don't you 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 don't have to do what I'm doing, and don't ever say it was because of me <laughs> that you won or lost money. If you win money, though, it was my fault. <laughs> um, I would invest in land, not real estate, but that's me. So this is the thing, right? Land is a larger investment, though, because you got to still build on that land, right? So I've I've went to places, amazing places, and seen land. And the investor groups I'm involved in are like, yeah, but then building this is going to cost another whatever, depending on square footage. Let's just get something that exists, something that makes money. You do enough of those, enough money comes in that that will fund the build of something nicer. But in the beginning, every rich person, I'm telling I'm telling you, every rich person, no matter how rich they are, and I've been dealing with people as rich as they come, they all want this. And this is why I want this. They want as many trickling streams of income as possible that come up to a dollar amount a, a month that they can live forever off of. That's called financial freedom. And these are rich people, right? So, so when, when you think, all right, one day I'm going to have a million dollars in the bank and I'm going to be set. I'm talking about people that have a lot more money than that in the bank. And they still don't feel like they're set. They still feel like they have to create revenue streams on top of having that money in the bank because they do understand. Of course, they spend more money, but they do understand how this works. Nothing is forever. Any business you have, any anything is, is very rare where things are forever. So if you have, if you're hitting on something and it's working and you're making a bunch of money, what these people do is they take some of that money and they say, all right, let me buy something that will keep giving me revenue even when this stops working out as well as it's working out right now. And I wish, wish, wish I would have learned that lesson earlier in life. Um, it hurts to learn that at this age. But still, what I've learned too is only takes 10 years. It takes 10 years of doing the right thing to change your whole situation. And all these people I'm talking about that are really rich, they did it in 10 years. And, and, 10 years of hard work, of course, is not like no such thing as like um, work life balance in those 10 years, though. But if you get, if you say, look, we live 100 years, our first 20 are like kid play stuff, 80 years left, take 10 of those and say, all right, which 10 am I going to dedicate to like busting my hump to get to the level I want to get to? Right. Right now, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been doing it, but I've been doing it wrong. The, I thought it was going to be my 30 to 40s. Building a company, but I didn't realize you got to build multiple revenue streams, not just one. But of course, the richest people, they, they start out with their first company and it makes them a bunch of money. I just built a company that wasn't going to make a billion dollars because I didn't understand the way it worked. But now I'd rather just make my trickles the same way they are. And I'll ride in their wake, right? Like these rich people that want to make 20000 per deal, I'm willing to make five or two or three, right? And it builds up for me. And that's all I'm, I'm good. And that's why we, we, we're fine, right? I'm, I'm making something off them. I'm helping them. They're helping me. That's how it works. Another, another thing I've always heard was the best, easiest way to get rich is to make someone else that's already rich, richer, <laughs> right? Because if they are already rich and you're helping them become richer, you're learning from how they've gotten rich and, and participating in that new upcoming revenue and that'll help you get rich because it's working. They already know how to do it and they can help you grow. So that's been something I've really been working on too. All right. You bought XRP me too. When did you buy our XRP? I lost a grip of money when it dropped. I couldn't cash it out fast enough. The thing is though, that's again, it goes to the, the whole gaming timing, the stock market. It's the same thing with crypto. You got to either believe in the project and say, do I believe this thing is going to be around for 20 years? Or you got to hope you time it right. So to me, I'm looking at the project as a technology minded person. I'm saying this has, this has the opportunity to work. May not, but I'll put a few bucks. If it works, it works. Why is that? Because when I saw Bitcoin, I really wish I would have been thinking that way because when I saw it, it was 30 cents. And I knew it was the future of money. What, what, I didn't really fully understand it, 
But I knew if it worked, it would be the future of money. Which is crazy to be like, and if I would have put $100 in, which I was going to, and I don't know what stopped me, that $100 would have been worth $4 million right now. So, now, when I see a project that I'm believing, I at least throw in $100, right? You waste $100 every week probably on food and dumb things. You put in a project that you think you believe in and you, you understand it. And that's another thing as an investor, if you're in this investor world now, you have to become more sophisticated and understand how to vet your investment. Look at the project. Understand it. Say, I don't believe this is going to work because this, this, and that. You have to be very um, critical of these ideas because that's how you're going to make your money, right? So XRP, I believe I saw XRP and I realized that they were, I never sold my shares. I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah, don't, sh- don't sell them. I think what, what was going to happen with XRP is XRP is going to be used by governments. So Bitcoin is kind of like this out, out of the mainstream thing where governments don't like it because they can't control it. But XRP, I think they are going to be able to somewhat control it. So they're going to they're gonna want people to use it. So having XRP now, I believe it's going to go up. But who knows? I don't have $100,000 in it though. You know, I just got a few bucks. So if it happens, it happens. But things like Ethereum, if you don't have Ethereum, Ethereum, a lot of the blockchain software is built on Ethereum. So... That's one of the ones I bought early too, and it definitely benefited me. Um, yeah, but, but if I look at what I bought, I bought Bitcoin, Ethereum, I bought XRP. Oh, I forgot. I can't look because I'm on Instagram Live. But join my multiple revenue streams uh, Facebook group. It's a link in the description, and I'll tell you which ones I got. Do you interested? I'll tell you why I bought them and everything. Um, so again diversify, right? I, on another thing I, I saw um, Kevin O'Leary say, because we're talking about affiliate marketing being a diversification of income within content creation. But overall, content creation is one revenue stream, right? So what Kevin O'Leary was saying was, Kevin O'Leary's from Shark Tank. The, he's, uh, they call him Mr. Wonderful. He was saying, you never want to have one asset class take up more than 20% of your overall investments. Of course, easier to say when you're a billionaire like him because most people, real estate is the first one and real estate is a large amount of money. So if you said, if you said real estate was 20% of your overall investment and you just bought, a, a, let's do easy math, a $100,000 thing in real estate, that means you have to have four other things at $100,000 so let's say you put $100,000 in stock, $100,000 in cryptocurrency, $100,000 in a business. Um, is that five? I don't know. Whatever. That that becomes a lot, a lot of money. So I've been asking my rich friends that. Like, all right, so do you do that? Do you do 20%? And most of them are like, no, I don't. I do mostly real estate because I know I can't lose a real estate, right? The value of the property will never go away, but... I'd rather keep the property, instead of flipping it, I'd rather keep the property and get that funnel of info of income every month. So if you think, so there's, that's again, it's the flip or the, the hold, right? It's, it's the same concept with real estate as in stocks. You're either trying to time the market and get out and make a big chunk, or you just buy and hold knowing you make money every month, right? So these investment concepts are very similar in every asset class. It's just you figuring out what your comfortable, you know, position is. I'm not, I'm not going to be, so, so here's, here's the juxtaposition of me. I could just buy a property, put a a tenant in it and make less money. But I want, I'm not going to flip the property, but I am going to make sure that it rents for the most amount of money every month by putting it on Airbnb. But that does mean I got to deal with people. Everybody, every time somebody wants to rent the space or there's a problem, I got to deal with it, right? So that's my trade-off. I say, look, I'm going to buy and hold, but at the same time, 
I'm going to maximize the monthly by dealing with people. Right? So, and that's why I was watching another YouTuber. I think his name is, uh, his, com- his, his YouTube is called Short Term Rental University. This guy was a billion dollar hedge funder. And he said, which I was like, all right, see, I'm understanding this. He said, I've never seen an opportunity in my whole career of investing like investing in Airbnbs in vacation locations. And when I saw that, I was like, I had to rewind. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did he just say what, I, what I've been thinking? So I watched it and he said, because of what I just said, the property location, the value will always be there. Then... The, the, the ability to maximize the monthly and make a lot more revenue on renting out than an apartment to, a, to a, a family or something makes it. And then he said there's some tax advantages that are coming along too that are making it. So it was like, all right, I'm on the right track. I'm learning. I'm learning. So all this content is around me learning revenue streams, trying to implement them. There's going to be ups and downs. I'll, I'll tell you the downs. You know, we're going to see once they come. You know, right now, the stock market is up. It may go down. I've been thinking about using that money somewhere else, like maybe put it in a property, knowing that the stock is going to go down. But part of me is like, let me just buy and hold. Just stay with it. Stay with it. Even though like, like Tesla doubled my money. So I was like, might as well take it out and put it in a real estate thing. And I'm like, nope, let's, let's do the Kevin O'Leary. Keep some in different asset classes, right? So, again, hopefully one day, very soon, I have somebody at the stocks come to the show and really talk about how that works. Um, all right, Ayana, the risk you take is someone trashing your place and cost you repair and upkeep. That's not even a risk in Airbnb because Airbnb has a million-dollar insurance and the person leaves a, a security deposit. So if they trash your place and the security deposit is seven, eight hundred dollars, whatever it is, you take that and then you get the insurance from Airbnb. They've thought of that really because the business wouldn't work if people could just trash your place, right? So from what I've seen so far, there's definitely things and legal structures you have to do, and I'm working on that right now to make sure I'm protected. You know, my investors are protected. There's no issues that can happen. So there's a bunch of different learnings that go on there. And once I finish that process, I'm going to create content around that whole thing because another revenue stream I'm going to create is I'm going to help people do it. They could either invest in properties we're investing in or I will consult with them to get them a property and set them up. So that that's another revenue stream I've been working on for over a year. Hasn't made money. This is my first test, right? So again, this stuff takes time. Content takes time. All this stuff takes time, and I really, I thank you for anybody who's watched. Thank you, you know, like it wherever you you, you see it, share it where anybody you think could benefit from any of the information that I'm putting out. But the truth is, you gotta just start. You gotta start, even if it's a little bit. That's why with stock, I started out with like twenty dollars on Cash App, and then every week I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put fifty dollars, put a hundred dollars, put twenty dollars, put five dollars. And that's where I said, you know, I just want to start being involved in other asset classes, different revenue streams. And I didn't even really understand it. But what started to happen was once I started putting money into the stock market, my mental energy started to want to understand it more. And I said, all right, now I understand. Okay, so Tesla checks all the boxes based on what I understand. Let me put money in that. And it worked. I'm not saying everything works, but I only really invest in technology that I understand and I know is going to be around. I'm not really investing in anything other than that, really, right now, because that's all I know. That's the industry I know. So luckily, that is an industry that, that makes sense right now. But I'm learning stocks, too. I'm learning real estate. This is my first real estate endeavor for, re- for investors. I know about Airbnb already. I knew about it. I ran an Airbnb, so I understood it, but I didn't buy the property. So it was a different different way of doing it. So again, just start. Join my Multiple Revenue Streams Facebook group so you can start. We can start together. Um, and thank you for watching. And remember, innovate every day. And again, see you back tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.